Well, we've got Storm Betty named by me, Arian, and when I think of Storm Betty, I think of this. Of course not. Old oh, friend. Yes, good old Frank Spencer. What a fantastic comedy that was back in the day. Yeah, um, Storm Betty has been named, like I say, by Met Arian. We have got uh, another weekend of wild conditions across the British Isles. Well, it looks as if we are going to see the worst conditions through the overnight tonight and into the early hours of Saturday morning. We could see some damage in wind gusts. Of course, a lot of people out and about. Whether it be camping at the outdoor events, traveling on the roads, you name it, busy time of the year. And of course, it is yet another weekend of inclement weather across the UK. According to our friend Tryon Bruin, it looks as if um, it may be the eighth weekend in a row where low pressure has dominated at least Ireland, if not both Ireland and the British Isles here. So pretty remarkable stuff. This is the second named storm of August, by the way. And remember, of course, Storm Anthony was named for the first time by the UK Met Office since the three uh, triple areas of low pressure back in February 2022. So it has been quite a remarkable summer, really, overall, after the warmest, dry, one of the driest Junes on record to a very wet July, uh, wettest, of course, across Northern Ireland, across parts of Northwest England as well. And the first half of August, we have seen two named storm systems. So, of course, we do have um, developing storm Betty. This is the current visible satellite image, uh, according to the, the um, weather online. And you can see here this mass of cloud now starting in Gulf, uh, Ireland, and indeed the UK here. Right at the very tail end of this um, system, that is the centre of the uh, rapidly deepening area of low pressure. What we've got is a jet stream that is turned across the Atlantic and over 150 miles per hour. And what we're seeing is this arm of strong jet stream winds exit Newfoundland here, uh, almost a straight zonal flow across the North Atlantic. And it's what is taking place is an interesting scenario. We've got, of course, uh, accelerating winds here through the core of the jet stream. And then right at this, um, this right tip point here, we've got deceleration of winds. Now, if my meteorology is accurate here and correct, and if I know what I'm talking about, we have, of course, got increasing strength of winds through the um, uh, the entrance region of the jet stream here. This is the left exit region. This is the right exit region. What happens is we have got accelerating winds in this speed core here the speed max, and then decelerate winds ahead of it. And what that does is it forces the atmosphere, the air mass, to rise ahead of this uh, speed max here. Um, and you can see what takes place as we skip through the sequence. You notice here the Betty is not on the chart here. This is at uh, zero, zero, Z Friday morning. So the very beginning of this morning, there was essentially no storm. Next frame, second frame. There's the system then starting to develop here. As the ingredients all come together, we've got that accelerating and deceleration of winds. That, uh, of course, forces the air mass to bundle and generate this deepening of low pressure here. But we do have very powerful winds uh, at jet stream level of 133 knots or 153 miles per hour if you see the conversion, conversion here. And then what happens is we've got this strong jet stream then uh, crosses the southern flank of the area of low pressure. And it's right underneath the jet stream itself where we're going to see the most potent area of winds. Uh, southern coast of Ireland, southwestern portions of both England, Wales, up through the Irish Sea. We're going to see very strong winds indeed here, potentially damaging uh, winds along the coast. Remember, trees are in full foliage as well, so there's more weight in the trees at this time of the year and therefore we can see more down trees as a result and stripping of the leaves and even branches but it's the dynamics coming to together that is very very interesting you can see here how the system kind of pops just in that area of decelerating winds then of course the strongest jet stream winds 
the shift to the south of the center, that area of low pressure deepening to the north where, where the air mass is uh, coming together, piling up, so to speak, the air piling up, it tightens the vortex and it means we've got stronger winds in response to that here. And of course, one area of low pressure after another, two named systems will have had, of course, some fairly potent areas of low pressure back during July. Is the very warm sea surface temperatures compared to average a response to the unusually deep areas of low pressure? That is a possibility, I think, as we go forward. So let's have a look and see what exactly is expected from this situation as it unfolds here. If I can get to the right chart, that would always, of course, help. But you can see here that we've got this area of low pressure deepening. We've got an arm of very heavy precipitation. Wind-driven rain is going to be affecting the majority of the British Isles here. And that is exactly what's taking place. If we look back at the homepage, you can see here that the rainfall radar is like this at the moment here. So the focus of heaviest rain over southern Ireland, southeast Ireland, parts of South Wales, West Wales, and indeed the southwest of England at this moment in time the strongest wind gusts as of recording are as so 46 mile per hour at st mary's in the isle of Scilly. we're going to see increased winds during the overnight period tonight i think here so we'll look at rainfall totals in just a second rainfall at rates as well is going to be a, a, a notable um situation as well the good thing is that this heavy band of precipitation with a chance of embedded thunderstorms, especially central and eastern England during the overnight period tonight. Um, we, we are quite concerned actually about that as the dynamics come, to, uh, come together. Warm, juicy air, so that frontal system that moves through is going to tap that ingredients, that environment uh, across the bulk of the, way, uh, of the Midlands and eastern portions of England, and it's going to increase the lift within the atmosphere, generating very significant rainfall totals in a very short space of time. Core of strongest winds, Southern Ireland, uh, parts of Wales and England. Also, southwestern Scotland and eastern portions of Northern Ireland could be susceptible to gusts in excess of 50 miles per hour during the overnight period tonight. Of course, it will uh, likely have effect on shipping as well. So this is the ECMWF. This is the latest run of the model here. And you can see We've got, of course, that uh, outbreak of thunderstorm activity uh, earlier on this afternoon, South Midlands and Southern England. Then the main event takes place. We've got that very, very heavy precipitation. Notice the core of the heaviest rainfall lifting north ahead of that system. And then we've got this area of very enhanced convection seen on that uh, west-southwest flank of the low We've also got a very tight squeeze in the isobars in the southern and southeastern flank of the low itself. And according to the model, we are seeing some very intense wind gusts in excess of 143 uh, kilometers per hour. So if you get the conversion rate of kilometers per hour, you can see here that uh, 143 is, a, is 88 mile per hour. So looks as if the core of the strongest winds will be offshore, but we could see winds in excess of 75 to possibly 80 miles per hour to the east of Cork, possibly near the Waterford area on that south coast of Ireland during the overnight period tonight. Then, of course, the transfer of strongest winds will start to come uh, further east here. So we get the southwest of England, south and southwest Wales, up through the Irish Sea, up uh, you know generally on the along the coast from Dublin up towards Belfast, we've got some very intense winds coming in from a southeasterly direction. Then southwestern Scotland, we could have 50, 60, possibly 70 mile an hour winds along the Dumfries and Galloway coastline here. Even the Cumbria coast as well could have some issues as well. But the very very heavy rainfall is going to be an issue and a concern. As that boundary pushes east of the Pennines, we've got the instability within the atmosphere. We may have a little bit of convergent winds coming in off the North Sea, along with along that boundary itself. That forces the enhanced lift within the atmosphere here. And if you look at the Arome model here, this is average precipitation rates. So uh, amount of rainfall falling within an R could be very significant indeed. So you notice here some of these reds 
represent rainfall rates 10 to 20 millimeters of rain per hour. And then it's as we see that center then start to move on shore, we've got rainfall rates in excess of possibly 15, 20, even 25 millimeters of rain. You notice here up the east coast uh, to the south and to the north of Dublin, around the Dundalk area, up towards the Mourne Mountains here, where we've got that kind of piling up of moisture, the spurns, the Mourne Mountains, we could see on that windward side of these um, hills and mountains, some very significant amounts of rain, 70, 80 millimetres of rain could fall within the space of, of five or six hours. So this is going to be potentially a flash flood risk. Then we've got an outbreak of thunderstorms developing around the, the greater London area in the Kent, up into Suffolk, Norfolk, Lincolnshire. Um, we've got some very intense rainfall bursts in, indeed here. Notice here these kind of grey colours along that North Kent coast and offshore here to the east of London and the Thames estuary. We've got some rainfall amounts in excess of what, 25 to 40 millimetres of rain within a, uh, within a two hour uh, or an hour window. So that is very, very significant rainfall amounts. And that is, of course, a concern during the overnight period tonight here. So strong gusty winds as a concern Southwest Wales, Southwest England, Southern Ireland, heaviest rainfall. Yes, up across uh, Ireland, Northern Ireland, Eastern and Southeastern Northern Ireland in particular is a concern with regards to the amount of rainfall falling in a very short space of time here. So yeah, a very interesting situation developing with Storm Betty during the overnight tonight and into tomorrow morning. This is the Met Office warnings for Storm Betty. So the yellow warning, southwestern portions of England, Wales, up the west coast, northwest Wales, eastern uh, coastal areas of Northern Ireland, southwest Scotland, Cumbria, the Isle of Man. That is where the wind gusts may um, gust 45 to 55 widely, 60 to 70 mile an hour winds in exposure here. And with regards to rainfall amounts here, Northern Ireland has a yellow warning here for the majority of the province. 15 to 25 millimetres of rain, 40 to 80 millimetres, I'll get there, millimetres of rain falling inside the space of a very short space of time. Uh, southern portions of the Highlands up to Aberdeenshire, southern Scotland as well, and southeastern portions of England. Yellow warning for thunderstorm risk, uh, as much as 20 to 40 millimetres, like I say, falling within an hour, 40 to 60 millimetres within two to three hours, large hail, frequent lightning, enhanced wind gusts uh, as well with these thunderstorms is a problem. And of course, further north, 20 to 30 millimetres of rain, locally 40 to 60 millimetres of rain. That is going to be over the southern uplands, the south highlands, the Grampians. That is where, of course, the wind and the rain piles in off the sea here. So quite a turbulent time to come over the next 12 hours or so here. With regards to the heat situation, well, you can see here that it has definitely uh, lost the uh, significant heat for next week here. We've got these uh, two spikes in temperature, one coming up, uh, well, we're just we're kind of seeing the end of this current one, and then we're going to see another one in the next day, uh, early next week here. But notice here these 850 temperatures for London, um, the, the, the ensemble mean does not exceed 15 Celsius at 850 millimeters here, uh, or millibars, should I say here. So, mm -hmm. uh, and and uh, the Met Orion has uh, issued uh, an amber warning for the south and southeast coast, risk of uh, structural damage, fallen trees, uh, travel disruption, power outages, local flooding, and the wave overtopping as well here. So, very interesting situation to come over the next 12 hours. I can say that boundary will move through. Then we've got a north uh, southwesterly wind that is going to bring um, some shower activity and the majority of uh, the heavy rain will move northwards here. Final look at the 850 temperatures here and you can see what's taking place off the ECMWF model here. So uh, it does not look as if we're going to see the real heat um, even into the early portion of next week here. As you can see, uh, you can see that the heat never uh, lifts north of the uh, UK here. So 
as per usual, run out of time. Lots of things to digest. Please like, share, and subscribe. And I'll see you again on Sunday with Global Weather and Climate Report. Enjoy your weekend.